Some days you look like a hot mess. <laughs> okay, good morning, Frigalistas and Dumpsterinos. I've really been trying to up my long-term food preservation skills. And today I'm doing some more jammy jam canning. And I thought, oh, why not just make a video of it? Now, for people who are new to canning and are looking for a really good instructional video on really how to can from a master canner who actually knows what she's doing, this is not that video. I'm new to canning. I've only done it for a couple of weeks. I freaking love it. Now, I'm still not into the whole pressure canning thing. Anything with the word pressure, I don't like. Under pressure. Do, 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 do. I think for people new to canning and who are interested in canning, maybe haven't canned before and who also might be afraid of canning, I think this will be a good video because you're going to see how someone who's brand new and learning and still making a ton of mistakes can actually have some level of success. And if I can do it, anybody can do it because I'm a giant dumbbell weirdo, right? right? I find that a lot of the videos made by experienced canners don't answer my questions because they just all give you the party line, which is fine, of how to safely can foods so you don't poison yourself. You don't want to be given a big old jar of botulism for a Christmas gift. I personally, just speaking of Christmas gifts, Jarring up jam and all that, that's a great Christmas gift. I'm not going to give any away personally because the jar I give away is going to be the one where someone finds a bunch of cat hair. I'm just not going to risk it. Like, I'll eat my cat hair, jam, but I'm not going to risk it on somebody else. I'm just not. Because, you know, whatever. So nobody's getting my jam. So a lot of people who are very good at jamming, just they give you the, this is how you do it. These are the rules. Follow them. But if you have questions, they're not answering your questions because they, they... They're just doing it right, you know? So I'm the one saying, well, why do you have to do that? Do you have to do that? Do you have to put the lid on? Do you have to blah, 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 blah? Why, 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 why? So for new people, we're figuring it out together, and we're going to try to address some of our questions because when you watch the experienced people, they don't really explain this is why you have to do it this way. It's just you have to do it this way. One thing they all point out is don't make up your own recipes as you go along. You want approved recipes from the USDA or from the National Center of Preservation, blah, 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 which is at the University of Georgia, where my ex-husband is a professor, my ex-husband who looks exactly like. So the reason you're not supposed to make up your own canning recipes is because they haven't been tested by the USDA or the National blah, blah, of preserving blah, blah. Like, for example, I made pickles, which was mind-blowing to me with dumpster cucumbers. Remember the English cucumber versus the regular American cucumber? I pickled those. Like making pickles, I freaking made pickles. I love pickles. I've bought pickles my whole life. I love pickles so much. And I would have thought, oh, it must be hard to make pickles. How do you pickle things? I don't know. It is not hard to make pickles. It is empowering to make pickles. I, I'm like a goddess now. So anyway, with something like pickles, I'm, of course, going to follow the recipe. It's just kind of with, like, the fruity, jammy things. I'm just kind of, like, making stuff up. And a lot of the recipes that you'll find approved from, you know, the USDA or, or like, an Amish canning recipe book or the Blue Ball book, a lot of sugar. I mean a lot of sugar in these recipes, a disgusting amount of sugar to me because I don't like to add a lot of white cane sugar to anything, ick, Ever, if one can help it. I just, ick. And I know some people have said to me, I just eat sugar. What's your problem? Do you know how addictive sugar is? Do you know sugar is like as addictive as crack cocaine? If the jam doesn't taste sweet enough, um, I add some Splenda. And I pretty much think these fruits are acidic enough. That's what I'm gathering. But I'll throw in a little lemon juice. Or Anyway, join me on this journey today. We're going to hang out and we're going to make jam and jar it up and hope for a limited number of explosions. I have, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you everything I've jarred up so far. Um, and I have had some failures. I have had some lids not seal, which I am so glad happened because honestly, it is from your mistakes that you really, really do learn. And I hate when people say that, honestly, because I'm like, I don't want to make mistakes. I don't want my food to get wasted. I just want it to freaking work. But with all my jars that worked, I still was like, well, I don't know. I mean, they sealed, but how do I know I did it right? How do I know there isn't botulism in there? Like, how do I know? How do I know? I don't know. So when the ones that didn't seal, didn't seal, and the lids just, I mean, they're not sealed. They're just like not attached. 
then it's like, oh, that's what it's like when a lid doesn't attach. Okay, I get it now. So it's actually helpful to have the failures to see. Oh, yeah. Anyway, little Miss Nevy and I went mulberry picking this morning again. We have a ton of mulberries. I have some strawberries from my own garden that are going to go in this bumbleberry jam. That is what my Canadian frugalistas told me. You guys call a mixed berry jam up in the Canadian realms, pro the provinces. There's my little helper. So here are just some of the mulberries we picked this morning. So those are the ones I have to pull all the little stems out of. Those are the ones in the pot already. And those blueberries are dehydrated blueberries that aren't that magically delightful as dehydrated. So I'm throwing some of them in the pot too. So there'll be some blueberries in here with all their pectin and they will rehydrate and absorb some of all that excess liquid that's going to come oozing out of the strawberries and mulberries. And it's just going to be fabulous. And there's more mulberries. Yeah. These are some dumpster nectarines that I'm going to, I don't know, make nectarine pureed jam or I don't know, something with those. And then here are some more of the dumpster cherries that I'm just kind of soaking here in their little vinegar bath. Just clean up until I have space to start to cut those up. Do I have mulberry on my face? So here are the nectarines that I simmered around. I'm going to puree all this stuff to make it, um, you know, jammy, jammy, jammy. These are just cherries, which I will also puree because the skins are there and everything. And then here is the mulberry pot that I just put on the stove. So it's got the mulberries, it's got grapes, cherries, blueberries, uh... I think that's what I put in here. I don't know. So this just has to, this is just going to start to cook now and, and, and jamify. This is my big canning pot. I just call it a big pot. Oof. Not a canner. I don't have the little, uh, what is the thing you put in the bottom? Like the little wire mesh tray thing that lifts the jars up off the bottom of the pot. You're supposed to lift the jars off the bottom of the pot so they're not sitting so close to the heat source and therefore our guests are not as likely to crack and break and explode and whatever it is you don't want glass to do. So apparently some people will put a bunch of canning rings at the bottom to lift up the jars. I've tried that. I didn't really like it. I've also done a few batches with a dish towel at the bottom and then, you know, water on top. And I didn't really like that method either. I've done a bunch with just the jar straight down on the pot. And I haven't had any glass crack or anything yet, but if I do, it will be my own damn fault, right? Cause I don't have that thing that goes in there in the bottom. This here thing is a jar lifter. Cause you want your jars to go straight in, up and down, up and down, right? Not tip to the side. And I just got this yesterday at Walmart. It was like $4. Cause I was trying to use tongs before, just regular old tongs. And it did not work at all. And I, I did reach my hand into some very hot water sometimes trying to pull these jars out. So I'm really excited about having my official jar lifter now. All right, here we go with our giant pot and we have some jars in there. So my understanding is that in the old days, everybody sterilized their jars. And a lot of people still do, the old school folks. Apparently now the wisdom is that you don't have to sterilize anything first because when you water bath can, which means once all these little jars are full of food, they're taking a bath in the hot boiling water. And you have to have enough water to cover your jars by an inch or two. So I actually am gonna fill these with hot water and put them on the stove so the pot and the water and the jars are all heating up together. So when I put my jam in, the jam is going to be going into hot jars, which then are going to go into hot water, which are then going to eventually come up to a boil, which is just what I'm doing because, you know, I'm new and I don't really know what I'm doing. But I kind of want my jars to be really hot because I think then they're less likely to crack and break considering I don't have the rack at the bottom of the pot to lift the jars off the bottom. So I am going to put my little jars on the stove for a while 
while my jam finishes cooking and I puree up the jammy jam. Now one thing you have to remember, especially if you're using big jars, when you have them in here with water, all the water in the jars is taking up space. When there's jam in the jars, you take the jars out, put the jam in, jars back in, now the water that was in the jars can't be in the jars because the jam's in the jars, which means a lot of water will be displaced and start slopping over the top. I've done that several times. So just so you know, you don't need as much water once the jars have the food in them. So there we go, big pot on the stove so everybody warms up together, nobody cold going into a hot environment, nobody hot going into a cold environment. Also, speaking of the hot and cold, that is why when you pull your jars out of your pot after you're done, after everybody's had their bath, you don't want to put your jars right onto a counter. Put them onto a dish towel or something like that because you don't want that temperature change to be so abrupt. You know, hot jar, cold service, no, no, that's a no, no. So Jam Jam, you need to get pureed now. All right, those are my nectarines and I'm going to puree them first down in the sink so it doesn't splatter everywhere. And here we go with the mulberry, cherry, grape, strawberry, blueberry jam. I'm so glad I just cleaned the sink and the backsplash right before I started. And we're gonna line the jars up on my dish towel for the filling process. All right, one reason why it's good to follow recipes is that the recipe will tell you how long the processing time is, which means how long your jars of food need to boil. And I'm pretty sure for jam it's 15 minutes. I mean, most jams, okay, because obviously I'm not following a recipe because I'm a rebel. And I think with jam you usually want what is it, an eighth of an inch of headspace at the top, which means how, how high you fill your jars and how much air you leave at the top. If you're gonna process anything in boiling water for 15 minutes or more, that's why you don't have to sterilize your jars anymore because they're gonna be sterilized by that. So, we have, uh, we have our lids and our rings in that little pot of hot water. You can simmer them apparently, but not boil them. I boiled mine the first time I used them and seemed to work out fine. I guess you're trying to soften up. So you see how the lid has that orange stuff around the side? I guess you're trying to soften that up, though it seems to me like it's going to soften plenty once it's in boiling water. But that's, that's what has to seal to the rim of the jar. I just got my canning funnel with the big hole recently. Before, I was just spooning the stuff into the jars, which you can do, clearly, but it makes a big mess. I've never feared a mess. Ooh, that looks just lovely, doesn't it? This is cherry goo. Cherry goo. And I figured since I had the cherries, I might do one that's just pure cherry. And then with whatever's left over, I will either turn it into fruit leather or just add it into the mulberry jam. But I just thought, oh, try a plain cherry. So we'll put her in the jar. Oh yeah, the funnel is definitely gonna help decrease the mess. But a lot of things they say that you have to have and have to do, you don't really. Because what if you don't? You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to go out and buy all the gizmos and stuff, but you do have to have a big pot that's really deep. And when I was getting my little funnel here at Walmart, I saw a big for real canning pot with the, uh, the tray thing in the bottom. Oh, I wasn't even gonna do two cherries, but look, I am. Okay, two jars of cherry with some left over. I think I'll make uh, I think I'll make a fruit roll up out of that a little bit. All right. I was just about to say now one thing I've learned is, and then uh, when I was looking for my spoon, it just completely went out of my brain. That's how empty my head is. Like what was I gonna say? I have no idea. All right, that's the mulberry. See, that's the thing though with the. I mean, so far I'm not overflowing it, but I'm not used to really using a funnel really for anything ever. But so far, so good. Now, one thing you want to not do is tip your jars side to side. You want them to go, oh, see, I got, I got, I messed it up. You want them to go straight into the pot and straight out, like straight up and down, like thus, but with lids on. 
Come here, baby. Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Oh my God, you guys hear that thunder? I don't know if you heard it, but we're having a big rainstorm with thunder and lightning. The dogs are freaked out and I feel bad for them, but I love a good thunderstorm. Oh, look, I goobed on the side. Oh, that'll get cleaned up. Ooh, I can taste it. Mm. Oh, it is good. I have tried everything. The nectarines, mm, so sweet and bright and delightful. I like my fruity things to be a bit tart. I did squirt some lemon juice into these because um, it just doesn't taste like fruit to me unless there's sort of some tartness. See the nectarine going in. Now I know that kind of looks a little bit more like applesauce, but it's not. And I don't really care that it's kind of getting a little brown instead of bright yellow because it tastes amazing. I wish you could smell it. It just smells really fresh and peachy and nectarine and whatever. Oops, I wonder if there'll be enough to fill this big jar. I like these pots, these yellow pots. We found these in somebody's trash and I like them because they're like all retro looking and they're all cute and everything. I don't think there's enough to fill this one. Um, but they're not a heavy bottomed pot and things are always kind of burning and sticking to the bottom. All right, now what am I going to do? That's not enough to fill that jar. Dang it, dang it, dang it. It would be enough for a smaller jar. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I know. So there's a debubbling tool, which looks like it's basically a piece of plastic, but it has a little stair step thing at one end so you can measure your headspace with it. And I'm not going to get that. I just am using a plastic knife. And you just kind of go around. I mean, I don't know if it's as big a deal with jam when you put in something chunky like chunky apples or cucumbers or whatever you definitely have to get bubbles out because there will be bubbles even though you're pouring liquid in there's bubbles so i'll probably put a little bit more in these but i'm just going to do the debubbling just because even though i don't think how could there you know how could there possibly be a bubble in here i don't think they're bubbles with jam but who knows when you get your jars right and everybody in these videos will show you washing them in hot soapy water and they do smell like super weird when you buy new ones i just run mine through the dishwasher quite frankly and that seems to be fine um and i have another one of these little jars just coming out of the dishwasher right now so i'm going to transfer from the bigger jar into that little jar so we'll get a full jar see there we go fresh from the dishwasher quite warm quite warm quite frankly all right let's see if we can transfer this Bloop and a bloop. Okay. Now, you know, if you guys weren't watching, I would use my same little plastic fork for debubbling and just, you know, get mulberry jam detritus in with the nectarines, and I would not care. But for you guys, I'll use a whole new clean fork. I, I just, I just don't see anything like, I just don't see where they're going to be bubbles with jam because it's so thick and viscous. But what do I know? Let's just give them all a tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap them down and tap them down. Tap them all around the town and make the jam settle in the jars. Don't want any food on the glass rim or else the little jar thing isn't, it's not going to seal properly. So I've seen some people do it with water and I've seen some people do it with vinegar and I'm going to do it with vinegar. So we have a little bit of white vinegar on our paper towel and we're just going around the rim, 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 rim. And usually, since I have it slopped all over the place, you know, I'm wiping it off everywhere. Oh, and I'll do it a few times just to make sure. You can definitely tell when you're wiping something up because, oh, look, it's purple. I had some jars in the pot the other day, and they were almost ready to be done. And I'm just kind of looking in the pot, watching it boil. That one's pretty full. I'm thinking, there you go. And just as I was looking in it, there was this like little underwater explosion. And one of the lids just came off, like in the pot underwater. And the thing is, you do have the rings on, but a lot of times they seem to get really, really loose in the boiling water. They jiggle around and get loose. So I guess this one just got really, really loose. And I don't know what happened. The pressure built up or who knows. But it just like poof. And then I had this mango peach puree stuff. And it just kind of came blub, blub, blub out into the water. And it was 
sad because it was the waste of a lot of food and it was not the funnest thing to clean. I mean, it's not that hard to wash a giant pot, but yeah, it was interesting. But it's from these mistakes that we learn. I don't really know what I was to learn from that one, to tell you the truth, but it was interesting. Wiping, wiping, wiping. Make sure your rims are clean. Oh, yeah, you don't want dirty rims. Oh, no, no. One of you all, one of you fabulous viewers, I'm sorry, I, it's really hard for me to remember names for anybody, but um, somebody uh, with, my other, with my other little jamming video, my jamming, I was jamming, um, somebody commented that jam is like the gateway drug to canning, and it's so freaking true. It's such a good point, because once you do this, and it works, and you're like, oh my God, I am a chemist. I am a chef. I am a wizard. You just want to can everything. Now, I've noticed that when the jars are back in the big old pot of water, which is where they're going to go in a minute, um, that's pretty full, huh? That is definitely not an eighth of an inch left there. What should I do? Should I take some out? Take just a little bit out. Does anybody need a little bit more? You do. So I've noticed in the various videos I've watched, when people have these jars with their lids and rings on and they're back in the big pot of water, some people seem to pour vinegar into that water. I don't know why. Nobody's explained to me what that's about. And apparently it's highly controversial because some canners do it and some don't. I don't because, quite frankly, I don't want to waste my vinegar. If it isn't necessary, I don't know why. Again, nobody's explained it to me unless I know the scientific reason why. And considering some people don't do it and everything seems to be fine, I guess you don't really need to. But I use vinegar in my dishwasher. So after I do this little procedure, I just dump it in the dishwasher. All right, little synopsis. So you basically have your clean jars. And they're hot. And you put your hot food in them. Which, by the way, you can do cold foods too. So this is just hot. This is how we're doing hot. Uh... Clean hot jars, hot food goes in, debubble, wipe rims, then we're going to put on the lids, that's the lid, that's the lid, we're going to screw on the ring, finger tight, everybody uses that phrase, finger tight, which just means until it stops turning, but not like cranking it on, I'll show you that in a sec, um, then we use, we use that to lower them into the pot. And then we turn on the heat, and the recipe tells you what the processing time is. Um, this one's too full. So you turn the, the heat on, and uh, your processing time, which the recipe specifies, is how long the jars need to boil in there. So the first, like, 25 minutes, you're not timing yet because it takes a long time for that much water to come to a boil. You know what I mean? Then when you're done, I always overprocess, honestly, because I think underprocessing would be the problem. Overprocessing, you're just going to kind of overcook your food, but who cares? Because it's jam. Um, but after you process for 15 minutes, which for me is going to be like 18 minutes, then you turn the heat off and then you just let your jars sit in the water for a good five minutes. And for me, it's always longer since before I had to kind of reach in with like my bare hand and the tongs to try to get the jars out. So I'd leave it in there for actually quite a long time. Um, again, that might be why some things are happening imperfectly. Apparently, if you don't leave them in for that extra five minutes at the end as things are cooling, you get this siphoning issue where the whatever's in the jar can be like goobing out of the jar. Even if you have a seal, I don't know. I haven't had that issue with anything yet. I haven't really, I mean, except when the, my jar exploded in the pot. It didn't explode. The jar was still fine. It's just the lid popped off, which was oh so very weird. So, hot jars, hot jam, debubble, wipe the rims, lids on that were in warm water, but not boiling water. And we'll put the rings on. I know, Pasha. One, two, Spoiler three. alert, we're going to have an issue with that jar of nectarines on the bottom left that has kind of the golden colored lid. And I now have a theory about why that one's going to fail. I got some jars and lids at the thrift store, which was great and a bargain. 
but I think that lid had been used before and you're not allowed, you're not supposed to reuse lids. I mean, some people do, but they're really only designed to be used the one time and the lid failed me, the seal failed. And I think it's because that golden one is different and I think it's the thrift store one. So yeah, we're gonna lose some of the food. Just get yourself prepared for that little trauma because it's coming up soon. You'll also see canners use this little magnetic tool to pick these up and plop them right on the top. And then some people say, you don't actually really have to use that anymore. Then we go with the rings. So finger tight means like, lock. Wait, get on there, damn it. There we go, finger tight, and then like that's it. I'm not gonna like uh, crank it on. You just kind of put it on till it stops spinning. So your processing time depends on what's in there and also on the size of the jars. The bigger the jar, the more processing. So let's say I have all these little jars of jam that need 15 minutes of boiling time in their bath. But I also have a jar of apples that needs 20 minutes. Well, then everybody's getting 20 minutes. Like you're going to err on the side of the longer time, not the shorter time. Or just don't mix what you're doing in there. I, I have had different things going in there at the same time just because I um a lot of what I what I've canned is sort of dependent on just kind of what I have in the house and what we found in the dumpster all right they all have rings um and I don't always have enough for a full full batch so anyway so far so good so now these are going to go into the big pot of water and then we will turn it on and we'll make sure not to overflow it due to the displacement of water Eureka! Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to lift it straight up. Put it straight down in. Straight up. Straight down. And I guess you don't want to tip it side to side because you don't want any of the food to slop up onto the lid, I guess, because it can interfere with the seal. It's all about getting a good seal. Why do I have a gold... Top. I don't know where that came from. It came from the thrift store, you dimwit. Oh, God, I love this lifter. Oh, anyway, so I was telling you at Walmart, I saw the big pot, the regular canning pot with the, the rack thing in the bottom. And it really wasn't all that expensive. I think it was like $22 or something, so it wasn't that bad. But I got my big pot at a thrift store, so I'm just not worrying about the rack. And I'm not sure what the reason is why jams and jellies go in these little jars. As I think I showed you, I've put them in all different size jars, including the huge jars. And I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's just because people think, oh, well, you don't want to open a quart jar of jam because you just can't eat it that fast. But I can. I have, um, I have my homemade sourdough bread made into toast with jam on it every single day for breakfast. And I have my homemade sourdough bread made into toast with avocados on top for supper. I'm really going whole hog on my sourdough bread. And it's just because we have a bunch of avocados from dumpster diving. I mean, I wouldn't go out and buy them, but I figure, well, we have them and really nobody else in the home right now wants to eat them but me. And I don't want to let them go to waste. And if I use avocados, then it saves on butter right? Or margarine. All right. So nobody overflowed. There wasn't that much displacement. We do have a couple cat hairs floating on top. That's why we don't give things as gifts because, you know, gross, weird. Okay. So everybody's in there and now we're going to turn on the heat and crank it up. Well, yeah, crank it up. You can see it's pretty deep. Like it's pretty deep. It's more than two inches. And yeah, that was kind of hot. Once it starts to boil and really, really boil, they say like really boil. Then we start the timer. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. We've been hard at it, so we deserve a break. So here is some of my toasted sourdough bread with jam on top and my cup of coffee. The kids are not wild about my sourdough bread because they think it's too dense and hard, which it is. I love that. You know when you take a piece of white bread, like from your cheapo loaf from Walmart or Aldi, you know how you could just like squish the whole thing up into a tiny little ball? It's not what bread's supposed to be. All right, we're back in the dining room with our display on the mantle. 
Those are the salsas I made. Aren't they pretty? They look like salsa. One jar did not seal, and so it's in the fridge, and we just used it immediately. And I was actually shocked at how good it was, and I was actually surprised at how much vinegar goes into a batch of salsa. Like for the four jars of salsa, I think there was a full cup of vinegar. So each jar basically got a quarter cup, which maybe doesn't seem like that much, but it felt like a lot of vinegar going in. But I know the most impressive thing is the lemon curd. Oh, I hope Daddy gets more lemons out of the dumpster. I'd like to make lemon curd and lime curd and lemon lime curd, like mix them together and mm, mm, mm. I did have some lemon curd left over that wasn't enough to fill another jar. So I have that in the fridge and I'm going to make thumbprint cookies with the little dabs of lemon curd. I think that's gonna be delish. All right, they, it's been boiling for a while. Something's obviously gone wrong because we can see fruit bubbling around in there. So one of the jars is obviously opened, at least one, maybe all, I don't know, because besides the nectarines I see bouncing around in there, sadly, makes me wanna cry, it also looks like some mulberry detritus floating around in there. So who knows what's going on in the bottom of that pot? Obviously, mistakes. But um, we'll turn it off now, let it sit for a while. We'll take them out, and hopefully somebody worked properly. Clearly, you are not supposed to <laughs> have fruit bubbling around like that. Maybe I used one of my lids that I wasn't supposed to use that I'd already used. I don't know. Somebody obviously didn't seal. I mean, that is just not a good sign. You don't see that in every canning video, the fruit bubbling around in the canning bath. No, no. The people who know what they're doing don't show you that. See, you learn more. You learn more with Frugal Mommy. So things have cooled down. See our murky fruit-filled water here. Let's figure out what what went on. We have to go fishing for these jars since I can't see anything now. Oh yeah, somebody definitely exploded. That's sad, but that one looks okay. So straight up, straight down. Don't worry about the liquid on top or the fruit, because we'll deal with that later. We just have to let these sit on the towel unmolested for a while. See, I got a piece of, ne oops, nectarine skin there. Now I am sad that clearly some of these did not work, but this is how we learn. I don't know what we learned from this, because I don't know why they're coming open. If it's that I don't have a rack at the bottom and things are heating up too fast and exploding, like I've got no clue. Did I overfill it? Like, I don't even know. Where are these things in here? But I'm not going to cry too much about it, even though that nectarine stuff tasted amazing and I'm a little sad about it. Because, you know, they were dumpster nectarines, so I'm not out really any cash. And I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning to follow directions and not make up crap as I go along. It would help if I could see what was going on in there. And I can't. Come on, I got to find a jar. Here we go, here's one. Woo! See, you're not supposed to do that. I did not have a good grip on that. You are not supposed to do that. If I could see inside this pot of water, it would freaking help. I think I might scoop some of that water out so I can see what's going on underneath. We got to bail out our sinking ship here. Now I can't see. Oh, there we go. Oh, see, there you go. Look at that. No. Oh, that's so sad. So that was nectarine. No lid. No nothing. Just full of water and and yuck. Failure. We learn from our failures. Embrace your failures. You are a failure. Oh, you're upside down. That's completely wrong. Come here, buddy. Turn over. Wait, I think, is that another? I don't know what's going on. God, I love this jar lifter thingy, though. This is keeping me from putting my hand into boiling hot water. You seem to be doing pretty well with the mulberry so far. But there's definitely mulberry goo floating around in this water. Who else is in here? Oh, we have another empty. Yep, that was the either the mulberry or the cherry that exploded. Sad, sad. Where are you? Oh, yep. Well, it wasn't supposed to be upside down, obviously, but... At least we have one jar of the nectarine compote, let's call it to be fancy, uh, that has its lid on and is okay. So anyway, we're going to leave these unmolested for quite a while. Let them just sit, leave them alone, don't play with them, don't press on the lids, all of which I have done with all my other jams, tapping on the lids, pushing down on them, shaking things, playing with things. 
um, way earlier than I'm supposed to. I have taken these rings off and then tried to, oh, see that came right off. So you're not supposed to do that. Um, obviously that didn't seal, so that sucked, but you're not supposed to play with that. But see all the food that came out of there? It was, it was too full and there was food on the rim. So we know why that one failed. Yeah, you're not supposed to do this yet. I feel like, oh, see, that's not sealed. That's still, okay. Leave them alone. Leave them alone, Amy. Leave them alone. But now I want to see. I want to play with them all. Like that one. Oh, that's a different lid on top. That one isn't even supposed to be there. Like that one's sealed. I'm not supposed to test it at this juncture, but I am. Because that's how we roll. And otherwise, this video will never get up because you guys want to see if these work. So obviously, that one didn't work. And I could use this to make fruit roll-ups or just put it in the fridge and have it as a jar of jam. So when I filled some of them too much, you can see there was that issue. Oh, see, that one didn't seal. And I don't know, is it was I using the wrong lid? Was I using one I'd used before and didn't mark? I don't know. I mean, this is a lot of failure here. Of course, oh, see, look at that. And I'm, uh, yeah, they must have been too full and it's bubbling everywhere. And so, well, that was fairly unsuccessful. I've never canning batch be this unsuccessful i'm so glad i could share it with you i think with these three jars ha having this much jam left i'm, I'm going to reprocess them i don't know do as do as the experts say not as frugal mommy does but you live you learn I, i've seen a lot of videos where homesteaders have their stuff stored with the rings on but you're supposed to s store these just with the lid not the ring to make sure you know like when there's a bad seal I mean, it, you don't have to guess. It just comes right off. It's just not sealed. It's not like halfway sealed or, oh, that was kind of sealed. No, it's like sealed or not sealed. And you don't want to stack them either, which I think when you go to your little country store and you buy some jam or someone gives you some homemade jam, they never tell you don't store the jars on top of each other. But apparently you're not supposed to because you don't want to put pressure on because you don't want a false seal. I certainly don't have any false seals, I think. So... Wow, four successes with these little jars and a whole lot of failure. But that's okay. Let's just make peace with the failure, and we will redo those. We'll redo them, I don't know, like now. Uh, dump out the water from my big pot and just start going again. Here's our vinegar, and we're going to re-wipe the lids. I know somebody's going to say, oh, my God, you can't do it that way. You have to empty them out, get new jars. You can't, they're too hot. Hot, don't do it. But I don't know. We have to try it to find out if it works. Because when you watch people who know what they're doing, they don't make these mistakes. And so you don't know what the hell's going on Ouch, when you make a mistake. That's why it's fun to can with someone who's completely new to it and screwing up a fair bit. Okay, there's our clean water on the stove. And I think I'm going to try, since I'm only putting three jars back in, I'm going to put the dish towel in the bottom, ow hot, to try to hold them in place. The thing I don't actually like about the dish towel is that it just kind of like floats around and I feel like it's uneven on the bottom, but I'm going to put it down there because I don't want these three jars to be unstable. Maybe this will make them more stable. I don't know. Great down. Oh, you're going to need more water because you're a bigger jar and you are not covered. All righty. So, everybody ready for another bath? Let's get the heat on again. Bear with me, folks. I know it's exciting. It's two more pieces of toast. It's new toast. I have to comfort myself from my canning failures. All right, there we go. They seem to be boiling. And I did have a lid on the last time, and I'll put this on. I just, you know, I don't want it all the way shut. And uh, we'll set the timer for 15 minutes again. All righty, let's get these three beauties out. See if they work this time. Straight up. Oops, I got the towel there. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh oh, the other one knocked over. Dang it. Come here, you. All right. So those three the redos and you can hear like how loosey-goosey that is I'm not gonna mess around with these this time we're just gonna leave them for a few minutes and we'll check back on them later I, I can't I can't wait I have to see if they're sealed 
you're supposed to be able to hear this popping noise when the lids do their sealing thing, but I never hear the popping noise. Like for all my lids that have sealed, I've never heard a popping noise. Oh, see that one? Look at that. That hasn't popped. These two. Those are good. Oh, did this one not work? Because it's still like, I don't want to touch that one. You just, you pop, 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 pop. Let's just see. This one didn't pop. And oh yeah, it didn't seal. And oh yeah, like leaked. There's like water in the top of it, which I just might pour off. And I guess I'm not going to try to redo that one for a third time. I think that's just going to become fruit leather. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. In the end, we have three jars that didn't work and seven that did. Seven jars of beautiful jam. With plan B of fruit leather. It's, it's just not like a problem because it's not going to go to waste. When they explode in the pot and there's fruit all up in the water, well, that goes to waste. That's a problem. But Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dragged On for, what, six days now? I appreciate you watching. I hope for people who are afraid to try canning, you'll try now. I mean, there's nothing to be afraid of except failure and fear and exploding fruit and more failure. I'm not scalded. I still have both my eyes. So, I mean, that's what we consider a successful day in the kitchen, right? And we do have seven jars of jam, so. Can the jammy boy say bye-bye, say bye-bye, Pasha bye-bye.